We are about to start the Centum Miniconf, the first ever, and we are about to set up history. So let's make it awesome. And uh, as first presentation, we have uh, two very important developers. We have Robin and we have Fabian. They are going to explain us uh, how the highest forces in Gen2 operate and uh, specifically how Council and Foundation makes us developers cooperate with each other. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, Theo, for this interesting introduction. Um, yeah, we are the highest forces in Gen2. We can do everything we want, and we can outrule anyone. I'm just waiting for signals from Theo right now. Is it okay? You want me to do this? Okay. Uh, I'm going to first give you a little bit of uh, insight about the Gen2 Council. And after I'm done, I'm going to hand over this headset to uh, Robin, uh, and he will do a talk about the trustees. So, um, my name is Fabian Groffen. The first one that was on the slide, Grobian, is my nickname. And, um, well, the birth of Gen2 is basically where it all starts, because uh, the foundation and the council basically came from uh, a, a kind of uh, situation that was left behind. Uh, after uh, the founder of Gen2, Daniel Robbins, uh, uh, left the project, more or less. Um, he, he founded Gen2 as a project, and then he was everything. He was like a king in his own empire, and he controlled everything. Up to the moment that he actually um, got something which is called real life, which meant that he had to get, uh, well, actually, had, he had to make sure that he could, uh, well, pay, or actually get money for to, to, to uh, care for his family. Um, just as a side note, I stole these slides from Mike Freisinger. Uh, I changed them a lot, but um, just to give him the credits for the original work. Uh, okay. So when um, when when Daniel was about well, actually was leaving, uh, there was first some sort of a manager's project. Um, uh, Daniel actually put it himself in there, and it was basically meant to make a structure into Gen2, where you have like uh, top-level projects, and you have uh, people under there, and each project has a operational manager, which was supposed to be there for day-to-day, -day, and a strategic manager who was looking at some long-term stuff, um, which, in a way, looked very nice, uh, because it had a structure, it was very well defined, but... Um, yeah, it, it sort of faded away, um, most likely because these kind of structures don't work if you have volunteer people. So um, the foundation was uh, actually um, uh, set up. That's what, what Robert is going to talk about in a, in a few slides. Uh, I just gave some brief things about what they are doing. They are doing basically most of the legal stuff that you have to do, um, but Robert will to tell everything about it. Okay. Um, so, um, because Daniel left, uh, the restructuring of Gentoo had to continue because we had to sort of get grip on what was going on. Um, nobody knew where to go. Uh, there were no directions and everything was, was going in, in many directions, uh, which were not really let into sort of focus, um, which, which claimed that some people claimed actually that Gentoo was dying and uh, I don't know what. Uh, we're still alive, by the way. And, um, that, that reached the peak moment in uh, 2005, somewhere we had a big crisis, and then we got like restructuring uh, proposals. And um, this was actually, uh, they started off at a FOSDEM. I don't know if you've ever been at a FOSDEM, but FOSDEM is uh, in Brussels every year and is the greatest open source uh, gathering. Um, and there were a couple of people there uh, to, to actually uh, propose restructuring uh, ways. Um, and, one, and actually, they're, they're from there, they got this Gentoo Council. The Gentoo Council is basically seven people that are supposed to be very wise. And um, they uh, get the technical uh, leadership decisions of Gentoo. Um, next to that, you have a structure in which e each and every developer is allowed to actually create a project. So nobody is tied to anything or uh, anyone for approval of creating a new project that somebody thinks that's really cool. Um, well, and then this council that is supposed to be only handling technical issues, so really looking at a higher level doing a technical decision, it's re-elected every year by, uh, well, everyone from the Gentoo developer uh, population. 
Everyone is allowed to vote. Not everyone does, unfortunately. Um, and of course, they have to do monthly meetings, which is in IRC, something very, very uh, yeah, boring, but um, they just uh, have to discuss issues that the developers raise, and uh, in, the, in the, yeah, well, the best thing they have to do is to make votes about uh, issues. And um, in my opinion, when they do it well, they actually uh, vote uh, only when it is really necessary to vote. I just want to give you a little bit of background about how these councils have evolved, because from, from 2005 we had a couple of councils, and I just, I just uh, had the names of the people that were in the council, and everyone who is in italics um, actually left the project, and the ones that are in light italics either uh, rejoined again, uh, Swift, or are still there, but we do not know if they're really active. Which basically leads to the conclusion that there's only one guy from the first council left in Gen 2, and he is, well, he's still working on it, but he is uh, in and out. He, he isn't as active as he was anymore, but that's Vapier, that's Mike Freisinger, the one who basically uh, wrote uh, the blueprints for this presentation. So they basically, as first council, try to work on yeah, how to get everything a little bit, uh, how to get the train moving, more or less. And, uh, well, so we have a second council, and the same thing actually happens there. Uh, Robert was in there as well, and uh, Vapier is still there, and the rest is all gone. Uh, two people are, are sort of like away, or they rejoined many times, and then, well, something like that. Um, well, of course, the first council uh, got some criticism. Why not? Because it was the first time there was somebody that had to say a lot about everyone, and of course there was some criticism. And they basically tried to deal with it by having also things like status reports, so everyone could see what was going on, like what was the input and what's coming out. And of course, being approachable, like not being somewhere high on a cloud, but actually being approachable to people, so you can just say, hey, you council member, uh, you know, I want this. Um, I think they, they succeeded in that. Let's just skip because it's boring to read all the council things. So just let's go to the to this current, the, the eighth council. That's the one uh, I am in. Uh, I am I'm for the second time in the council. And uh, what I wanted to do myself a lot is I wanted to make it effective, a bit more effective because the, the meetings in IRC turned out to be which was scheduled for one hour, usually took much more than an hour, and there were actually all kind of discussions and nothing really voted on. So, um, because I like to be effective with my own time, because I have to do a lot of things, I just try to uh, actually put on an agenda, make sure that we have very clear topics defined on an agenda that everybody can read about and then just have a vote. Um, yeah, okay. So basically, we, we turned up this structure uh, where we just say, hey, look, uh, we have uh, a call for agenda items where we ask everyone who has an issue to just uh, basically raise it to us on the mailing list so it's properly recorded. And then we just assemble a week in advance an agenda that will be the things that the council will be discussing, which also means that each and every council member has like a week to prepare the topics, read in, see what's going on. And um, then... Uh, we just uh, give the feedback about it after the meeting, in the summary. Uh, important thing to note is that, in my opinion, the council is absolutely not there to force, like if you have one developer who likes to do style X, that he goes to the council and asks the council to do a vote in favor of that one and that we force everyone to do that style. That's not the way that the council should be because the council should focus on these technical, higher scope decisions. Um, so that also means that we just deny certain uh, requests from developers because you can just solve them actually by talking to, uh, to people uh, among, yeah. So um, basically the biggest thing that we do is we vote on eAPIs. That is for Gen2 speak, it's basically sort of a versioning scheme of telling what is available in, the, in our eBuild system, the, 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 well actually for insiders, non-insiders, I should say. That's basically our format that describes how a package is built. And um, yeah, um, that's basically where we come in as a sort of a group of old wise men, even though we're not really old, and I'm not sure if we're always that wise. Uh, okay, well, this is basically that it's free, and that means I can hand over uh, the headphone headset 
If there are any questions, I think it's not cool to do it in between because I'm really open for questions. So, uh, there we go, that's fine. Um, hi, I'm Robin, we're about two of Gen 2. Um, so I'm going to carry on with the trustees. Um, first thing here is, who is the trustees? Uh, as we mentioned before, um, the trustees came into existence in 2004, and they had a much rougher start um, than council. Council, they went 2004, 2005 council said, okay, this is not working, we need to redo it how it is. Trustees, the period of 2004 to about 2008 is a black hole of Gen 2 history. Um, there is little on the way of documentation of it. Um, and come 2008, um, the prior trustees had mostly vanished and the paperwork wasn't in a good state. Um, and. Nettie, Sieg Nettie Siegen, um, Roy Marples, um, Ben Bamford, wrong one, um, ended up putting putting together um, the new lot of people, um, and then myself and Matthew Summers joined in 2009, um, and D. Abbott came a bit later after the passing of. One of the other few original trustees, um, FMC Corps, um, who was actually very useful in the original trustees, as he was the only actual lawyer in Gentoo. We had a lawyer; it worked. Um, unfortunately, he um, he passed away um, quite suddenly, and we put David Abbott up instead. Um, so what do we do? Paperwork. So much paperwork. Um, the the Gentry Council meetings, um, they have an overly long agenda because they think they have too many technical issues. Um, the foundation just has a few issues, but they take a lot longer um, because everything is subjective. There are no real, we have no technical decisions, we just have people decisions and money decisions to make. Um, Trademarks take time, getting the taxes right takes time, figuring out which of those taxes, um, our corporation registration. Um, people in the past said, Gen 2 is dying. Yes, because the US mail system lost our corporation renewal. Twice. It doesn't help, you try sending the mail to renew your corporation, and the mail system loses registered mail. It, why? Um, so then we also deal with money. And money is always a fun thing. Um, Ginger's income over the last couple of years has continued to increase. Um, 2010, um, I note I've marked as 24,000 um, US dollars there, um, 12,000 of which was actually Google Summer of Code money that we hadn't been paid prior to that because our paperwork wasn't such a problem. Um, and our bank accounts, um, we had two banks closed on us. <laughs> It, ha it happens. Um, so we call, really call that tw tw $12,000 nominally and going up by about $2,500 a year. Um, Google Summer of Code has been really good to us. It's where more than half of our money comes from. Um, it's PayPal thereafter, and then you just have the other little things. I, I, does anybody buy stuff off Cafe Press? We get so little money from them, is it worth the effort? We make more in interest than we do from Cafe Press. It's on, the, it's on many of the pages in the sidebars. Is Cafe Press worth it? Does anybody here think Cafe Press is worth it? Are there any hands? Bueller, Bueller, no. Um, so wh where does the money end up going? Um, we have an accountant now. Um, that's really helped with getting pay, uh, more of their paperwork and stuff. Our trademarks in the corporation side, um, we've been lucky. There's a US law firm that's handled our trademark stuff. Um, the actual them processing it has been mostly pro bono, and then we just have to pay for the actual legal fees for the trademark. Um, the corporation stuff, we've always had to pay as well. Um, for money, um, infrastructure has a nominal budget of $2,000 a year. 
if random bits and pieces break, we have to use stuff from that $2,000. Um, other major things um, have to be approved, first of all. Um, there's the same, same forms for major expenditures that every other developer fills out for money. Um, and I'd like to thank Google for some matching donations on some hardware. Uh, I don't think Alec is not here. Or has he won't gone and drunk this morning? Um, so as I said, f there's those forms for people to fill out for money, um, mostly for developers that want interesting hardware. Um, we've brought a number of MIPS and ARM development machines, um, and then other developers with their development machines were saying, we need more hard drives or more, store, uh, more RAM for those machines. And as the foundation says, sure, fill out this form, and we will send you the money or the hardware, depending which is more effective for you. Um, some cases, shipping can be really expensive. Um, other times, it's cheaper to buy the hardware in North America and ship it to a developer elsewhere. Um, and then lastly, conference money. Um, Gentoo has a number of posters, banners, um, and other conference material. And in a bunch of conference cases, we asked if you want to make um, DVDs to give out at the conference, um, just ask, approach the trustees and we'll put some money aside for you um, for whatever paper, other papers and those blank DVDs for you. Um, it is what mostly trustees do. Um, it is a boring job. Um, paperwork is boring. Um, how do we get more people interested in boring paperwork? I don't know. Um, the age of the trustees, I'm the youngest one at 30. Everybody else is beyond that. The average age of council is several years younger. Um, who's the wise old man? I don't know. Um, does it make a difference? One of the few things I want to, I want to mention is we have something different. Um, we were so concerned about losing some of this knowledge um, is that all the, the trustees' elections are actually for a two-year term, um, and we have over, overlapping periods, so there's an election every year still, but only half of the people are going to go away because we want to try and keep that knowledge. Are there any better ways to do it? I'm really open for suggestions as to keeping that knowledge, um, but I don't think anybody in here has suggestions. Uh, that's, I think that's the last one. Yes, that's the last one. So who has questions? I'll do trustees first, then I'll hand over for council questions. Yes, Petrai at the back. Wait, 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 wait. What's the current status of the 301C or something? The uh, non-profit status in the US? Um, so, uh, the present non-profit status, um, we're in good standing. Um, there was, have been ongoing discussions about potentially changing what form of corporation we are. Um, and I believe that's going back and forth with some lawyer questions at the moment. Um, I haven't kept up on that debate because the lawyers asked for just one point of contact, so they weren't sending a, a question to all of us and getting slightly different answers. And Ma Matthew was heading that one, and I don't know his current state on it. Um, I think there was actually supposed to be an update at the next um, foundation meeting. Um, we have an IRC meeting as well every month, just like council. Um, when that happens, I, I will pass on that information to you. Any other questions for trustees? Yep, trustees are just that boring. Okay. Well, maybe. Is there anyone who has a question on the council? No, you don't have to install it. Oh, it's boring too. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Uh, can you say something? Uh, you say so, some many things about the history. Can you say something about the future, your plans, or may, maybe the Gentoo f Foundation plans, or some w w what is what is planning to be in future changes? Okay. Well, um, basically, what what are the plans for the future in the council, kind of way, um, and uh, and foundation as well. I I I personally think that the council is not. Um, really uh, a body that should initiate any actions. 
I think the action should come from the developer community. Can be council members themselves, but the council should basically only be sort of the, 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 the minimal uh, step. Um, Basically, we should not block any progress by an entity such as a council saying, yes, you can do it or yes, you can't. And it's also not that the council should say, like, we want this to happen because, simply because uh, the work needs to be done by someone else. It's not like the council can say, you are going to do it. That's not going to work. So all the initiatives and all the work basically have to come from the developers in my opinion, and that means that the council should be just uh, facilitating them as much as they can. Uh, yeah, does that answer your question? Okay. Do you want to say something? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the other things there, one of the reasons that we're considering changing the non-profit status, um, due to unfortunate measures of US tax law under our present non-profit status, if we wanted to pay a developer to do some specific project, um, we can't because there's major tax ramifications for us. Um, potentially, once we have changed our non-profit status, there are more cases where we have the money. We want to put, say, this developer that's not doing anything for those months. Can we literally pay them to develop some very specific thing? Um, as it stands, we can't pay developers, but we can pay non-developers. This is really painful. We had paid one, I th no, one or two, maybe two, non-developers so far for small things to get developed. Um, one of those very recently was for some functionality in Git, so the Git migration can happen sooner. Um, oh, don't mention it. Okay. Is that, okay, that is this other council member who is going to ask me or him a question? No, just uh, Robin. So I, I would assume that's foundation members uh, Legal-wise, so if a developer isn't a foundation member, then he can be paid probably, right? But any, it was any developer, not just foundation members. Okay. The World Bank um, Google some of quote. Um, you, you mentioned that you, you have, under being a non-profit, you're trouble paying. The opposite for, for certain features, but what about um, what Google Summer of Code is, is, is paying for interns? Uh, so w the money we've been getting for Google Summer of Code for every six um, every project out of the Summer of Code, we get five hundred dollars per project going to um, the foundation. Um, we're presently just taking most of that money. It's bought a fair quantity of hardware that we've used, in including there was actually a machine deliberately for Summer of Code, so that all the students would have a machine to do work on. Um, we haven't passed on any of that $500 to developers because of that same legal issue. And, and the developers originally said, it's not an issue. Um, Gentoo has more need of the money than the developers. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, we don't have time for more questions. If you have anything else to say to those guys, feel free to back them around. Uh, I'd uh, also like to mention just that, uh, apart from the foundation and the council that are doing great work, we, in Europe we have also the Encento EV, which also stored our booth uh, out, outside, and uh, I would like personally to thank those guys for uh, all their work and all their cooperation so far. And thank you.